I've said it once and I'll say it again. Zuma is the worst. But you didn't believe me last time, so fine. I'm back to prove it once and for all. I went and watched every single episode of Paw Patrol. Every spin-off and every movie to quantitatively determine who is the least goodest of the good boys. Today we prove once and for all which Paw Patrol member is definitively the worst pop. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, the show where no theory is too big, no lore is too small. So exactly one year ago, I released a theory all about Nickelodeon's hit series, Paw Patrol. Specifically, I talked about how Ryder, the leader of the Paw Patrol, was taking advantage of poor orphan puppies in order to create a squad of expendable service animals, ones that he could then send into life-threatening situations. As we see in the show, Ryder pays the pups in treats and cuddles while keeping all the merch sales, government contracts, and stolen treasure for himself. Himself, thereby powering the expansion of his canine corporation and lining his own pockets. Now, I gotta be honest, I was half expecting a theory that dark about a children's IP so beloved and wholesome to draw some hate. But no, much to my surprise, Ryder exploiting defenseless puppies was not the thing that triggered people in that episode. In fact, most viewers were like, oh yeah, I suspected something was up with that kid. Apparently, y'all were just waiting for some validation, so glad I could give voice to what we were all suspecting this entire time. Now, what really rustled feathers down in the comment section was a passing joke that I made about one of the pups, the water rescue pup Zuma. I had the nerve to call him, dramatic pause, useless. <laughs> thought was a pretty innocuous and obviously correct series of statements really got some of you Zuma stands down in the comments fired up. Zuma does amazing things. I shan't stand for all this Zuma slander. He's the best pup. Not MatPat bullying Zuma for the entire video. Yes, MatPat bullying Zuma for the entire video. In fact, Zuma should feel lucky. He got more screen time in my single video than he's gotten across the entirety of that series. But hey, you know what? I'm an open-minded guy. A lot of you disagreed with my assessment and I heard you. So I did what any sane person would do in this sort of scenario, watch every episode of a program aimed at preschoolers while taking meticulous notes in a giant spreadsheet about the ratio at which pups are utilized and the manner at which they're called to action all in an effort to validate my feelings about an animated surfer dog. Yeah, I'm feeling fine and perfectly in control. Don't know why you're asking. Is there some universe out there where I'm being a little too harsh on Zuma that I'm bullying him? Probably not, but maybe. So let's just let the numbers decide. And if the data doesn't bear that out, then I will gladly swallow my pride and admit that I'm wrong. So today I want to set out to prove once and for all who is the most useless pup in the Paw Patrol. If we wanted to rank them, how did the core six line up? And perhaps most importantly of all, what punishment awaits you when you're the worst one on a team controlled by a cutthroat capitalist. Grab your pup packs and prepare for duty, loyal theorists. Theory Patrol, we're on a roll. So let's meet our contestants. Paw Patrol is all about a team of six search and rescue puppies. Each of the pups has specialized gear and vehicles designed by their leader, Ryder, all individually themed around typical emergency services. There's Chase the police dog, Sky the aviation pup, Marshall the firefighter, Rubble the construction pup, Rocky for garbage disposal and recycling, and of course, Zuma for water rescue. Each adventure has the team saving their hometown of Adventure Bay, rescuing anyone who might be in danger, and stopping the evil Mayor Humdinger from sabotaging the city. Now, it's important to note that in your typical episode, not every pup is going to be used. Usually, Ryder will call out two pups to start the mission, and then midway through, when things either go south or the situation escalates, another pup is added into the mix. We are pretty deep in the cave, and Jake got his foot stuck. Don't worry, Chase. We'll be right there. This system means that some pups are ultimately going to be used more than others. And so, yeah, I wasn't joking in the intro here. To collect the data for this video, I went back and watched all 406 episodes of Paw Patrol. And when you consider a typical episode is usually two rescues, you're looking at a hefty data set. But I wasn't done. I also included the three feature-length specials and the movie to track every single time a pup is expressly called to divert disaster. I noted the number of callouts, what they were needed for, and how successful they were in their rescue before tallying it all up into this beautiful Google Doc spreadsheet. So before we get to the pups themselves, there's one interesting thing that I have to call out from the data. Across the 800 plus adventures, there are 15 dream rescues, where the pups are performing some mission in their sleep, usually doing something extra cool like body swapping, saving golden coconuts, or rescuing flying saucers. Each and every pup gets one of these episodes. Well, each and every pup except for Zuma. Yep, every single pup helps in at least one dream rescue, but never Zuma. So to everyone who keeps insisting to me that Zuma's helpful, yeah right, in his dreams. Oh wait, I guess not there either. But now it's time to talk about our winner. Who is the best 
pop. Is it someone you didn't expect? A complete underdog working their way to the top? Well, after looking at the numbers, we find that the number one goodest boy of all the good boys is, drum roll please, it's Chase. In a surprising twist, that surprise Nobody. I mean, like, yeah, of course it's Chase. Across the 400 episodes, three features, and the theatrical film, Chase is called out to save the day an astounding 372 times, meaning that his skills are put to good use across roughly 91% of the Paw Patrol canon. And when you look at the equipment at Chase's disposal, it becomes clear why this is the case. A lot of it is just basic safety and rescue fare. Chase uses a net to catch people from falling, a ball launcher to deflect obstacles, and a megaphone to call out to the people that they're trying to rescue. And you absolutely can't forget Chase's standard pup mobile armed and ready with his handy dandy winch. I made fun of this thing in the previous episode, but after running the numbers, the winch's overuse is even more absurd. It is used across 42 separate episodes, meaning that Chase's glorified rope with a hook at the end is key to solving one tenth of the patrol's missions. Season 1 and 2 were especially winch heavy, with the tool being used in a grand total of 18 different rescues. More recent seasons have moved away from it, likely because 1. There's only so much interesting stuff that a rope and hook can do, but 2. Because Chase has actually proved himself to be the most versatile of any of the other pops. This is why he got himself a second set of gear, the Spy Gear, which helps Chase search for clues using night vision, heat sensing goggles, zip lines, suction cup shoes, and even a remote controlled drone. Seriously, it is ridiculous how tricked out Chase gets in this show. So it's safe to say that Chase deserves a spot at the top of the podium, but Chase isn't the only pup who covers a wide array of valuable skills for day-to-day -day emergencies. Coming in second, we have Zuma? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you couldn't possibly believe that Zuma's this high, right? He's gotta be in last place. No, the real number two is Sky the Aviation Pup. Again, this shouldn't really be that big of a surprise if you watch the show. Her specialty is flight, meaning that her plane and binocular goggles are incredibly useful for scouting above a potential disaster will cover in a lot of ground quickly. She also has herself a harness that she uses to airlift people stuck in higher, difficult to reach locations. Across the roughly 410 Paw Patrol adventures, Sky's called upon a whopping 333 times to help out, a remarkable 81% of the time. In fact, Ryder and the creators of the show have clearly noticed how valuable she is as an asset. Across the Big Truck Pups, Dino Rescue, Mission Paw, and Mighty Pups themed spin-off episodes, she's called out the most to help out over every other hero. And in the the latest season of the main show, she's reached the point where she's now used more than even Chase. Ryder, ever the capitalist, definitely recognizes a hashtag girl boss when he sees one. And Spin Master, makers of the show, certainly know how to expand their viewing demographic after having captured every preschool-aged boy who could possibly watch this thing. In short, Sky and Chase's dominance makes a lot of sense. Searching and rescuing are big parts of search and rescue, the backbone of the Paw Patrol's business model. So of course, Chase and Sky are going to be the most useful for Ryder. Fun fact, by the way, it's canon in the show that Chase absolutely has a crush on Skye, one that she either chooses to flat out ignore or is just completely oblivious to. <laughs> gotcha! <laughs> Take your it! Yes! Jekyllata's okay! She's okay! <laughs> yes! Skye's okay! She's okay! Aww, you were worried. Uh no, I wasn't. I'm just, uh, glad you saved Chicoletta. But from here on out, things start to get less obvious. Binge watch a few of these episodes and it's immediately clear that Ryder plays favorites to Chase and Sky. Beyond that though, we start dipping into the wild cards. Believe it or not, Rocky, the garbage collector pup, is actually the third most used. Talk about getting yourself a glow up. In season one, Rocky tied for the least used pup alongside Marshall and, of course, Zuma. But season over season, Rocky has made himself a huge surge, clawing his way out of the literal trash heap to carve a unique position for himself on the team. Now obviously as the garbage truck pup he's here to clean up after any messes from disasters, but more recently he's positioned himself as the crafty one. The one who can build or repair any gadget that the team needs using his claw arm and screwdriver. Ranging anywhere from a big slingshot to butterfly wings to a giant banana. And honestly that ability to build is the differentiator that's positioned him as my son Ollie's favorite pup. Rocky literally started from the bottom, now he's here. And when the pups get transformed into superheroes through the power of a magic meteor, don't ask, Rocky gets the coolest 
coolest moveset, transforming into the Green Lantern using giant glowing fix-it tools. All of this adds up to Rocky getting called upon for 291 rescues, a huge 71% of the time, cementing him as a solid bronze medalist in our usefulness awards. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've started to see a pattern emerge here. It's becoming fairly clear that the more general Pup's skill set is, the more value that they have within the Paw Patrol. Chase is a great all-rounder, Sky's aviation abilities are useful in almost any scenario, Rocky's ability to fix things will be needed basically every mission. So what about with the back half of our group here? Well, you see, their usages are much lower than our first three contestants, mostly because each one is so specialized. Digging, putting out fires, doing water rescues, they're only going to be so useful when put up against stuff like flying and fixing. That's why, coming in fourth, we have ourselves Rubble, who gets to use his specialties of moving boulders, lifting things with his crane, and digging holes 260 times across the series. It's roughly 63%. And then, right behind him, we have ourselves Marshall the Fire Pup, who's called on to help put out fires with his firefighter gear and use his ladder to reach people in need of rescue 248 times throughout the series, roughly 60%. Which means that if you've been following along, you know that there's only one pup left. One final member of the Paw Patrol that is objectively used the least out of all the others. And it's not even close. Placing dead last in seven out of nine seasons, ladies and gentlemen, the worst pup according to the numbers, with just 210 callouts and a 51% use rate, it's Zuma. <laughs> Do you feel that, loyal theorists? Do you smell that delicious scent wafting through the air? That is validation, my friends. And all I had to do to get it was to watch every single episode, thereby spending 150 waking hours of my existence here on planet Earth to do it. Was it worth it? Absolutely. Except... Yeah, this one comes with a bit of a twist. You see, data can certainly paint you a good picture, just doesn't necessarily mean that it's an accurate picture. Because there is a lot of nuance behind those numbers, my friends. See, despite Zuma being called upon in just half the show's missions have to give credit where credit's due. While he might be used the least, he's certainly not the least useful. When you look one layer deeper into the data, Zuma isn't the worst pup. There's one who's arguably much worse. One who barely succeeds. One who endangers everyone around him. The bad dog I'm talking about? Believe it or not, it's everyone's favorite klutzy Dalmatian, Marshall. Now, you might be thinking that this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Firefighting's an incredibly important profession, so how could Marshall be the worst? Well, for starters, yeah, Marshall does specialize in putting out fires, which is a very useful skill. Except, there are only 11 fires throughout the entirety of the series, meaning that only 2.6% of rescues are fire-related. And honestly, that's even me being generous. Two of those fires are actually inside of Marshall's dreams. More often than not, Marshall's water cannons are being used to paint Easter eggs, spray tomato juice, or clean up messes. Even crazier is the fact that Marshall has himself an entire second set of equipment, an emergency medical technician's kit to help check for broken bones and injuries. And yet, this too is only used 17 times throughout the series. But worst of all, the thing that cements Marshall into the worst pup position is Fire Truck's Ladder. It is far and away the most used tool in his arsenal. Called out for 76 rescues, 20% of the time. The thing that Ryder finds most useful about Marshall is setting up a ladder so people can climb down from high places. But then, Marshall can't use the ladder correctly. It often misfires, or he uses it in a way that results in people getting knocked down in some way, thereby making making the rescue situation exponentially worse. In fact, it's gotten to the point where Ryder doesn't actually trust Marshall to do his job correctly. He's even started implementing backup plans for when Marshall eventually fails. Marshall, I'll need you to raise your ladder so Mayor Goodway can climb down. Chase, you'll set up your net to catch the Mayor and Chicoletta, just for backup. And Ryder is taking action against this worst pup. In the latest season, Marshall's called out only 20 times to help, the fewest of any of the pups and the lowest amount of times in his career. In short, Marshall is being called out to help less and less as the series goes on, and that's because he's a liability, a walking lawsuit. So where then does all this leave Zuma? You know I called out Chase, Sky, and Rocky because their skill sets are so broad? Well, the one thing that Zuma's historically had going for him is his specialty. He's the water pup. That is his domain. No one else is really equipped for water rescues. You don't see Chase or any of the other pups generating bubble shields so they can breathe underwater. You don't see Sky diving underwater to lift platforms, or at least you didn't until recently. Ryan is starting to box Zuma out too. As the push for new ideas and new merchandising opportunities becomes a greater priority for the show, the pups have seen more specialized event-based programming. Most tend to stay in their own unique lane, just giving the pups brand new power sets that they didn't have before. The super-powered Mighty Pups, the Power Rangers, 
Wars-esque dino rescue, the medieval-themed rescue knights, or the race car-inspired moto pups. But then, there's the Sea Patrol, where for 15 adventures, all the pups are basically just turned into Zuma. Finally, the Paw Patrol are being presented with water-based missions, only for the work to be outsourced to the rest of the team. And to add insult to injury, that's not the only series of special episodes to do it. There's also the additional six episodes of Aqua Pups, and all of this is overlooking the times that they turned into Mer Pups. You know, mermaid puppies that appear only during a full moon. Come on, try to stick with me on this, guys. In short, whereas everyone else is generally allowed to keep their skill sets and add to them by these various spin-off adventures, Zuma is bit by bit losing the only thing that he had going for him. And you know, that makes me sad. After watching these episodes, I found a new appreciation for Zuma. He clearly wants to help. He's even excited to help in situations where he can't. Is there anything I can do? Sorry, Zuma, but I won't need any of your tools for this job. Oh. Okay. That right there, that is huge. Passion for a job and wanting to help, especially when you're talking about a business like this, where there's literally life and death being put in the balance, it is irreplaceable. Zuma is doing everything that's asked of him and he's doing it well. He's completely competent and capable of doing whatever Ryder tasks him to do. It's just a very specialized skill set. And yet here's Ryder boxing him out. He's focusing on the generalist pups, puppies who can do it all, his top three all-stars. I suspect it's to cut costs, to streamline, to make things more efficient. That way, one day soon, they can all be replaced by the one creation that Ryder introduced at the very beginning of the series. Yes! Robo-Dog is working! A replacement that was ready to go until it went haywire and destroyed the town. A robot that's been helping with missions ever since. Always observing. Always learning from the pups. In short, not even the Paw Patrol's jobs are gonna be safe from the AI invasion. It's just that Marshall and Zuma are first on the chopping block. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory! And I'm sorry, Zuma, I was wrong.